Hello, it's Ruth again. We've reached chapter nine in our journey through John. And this chapter is concentrating on the healing of a man who was born blind. Now, Jesus has healed people before. If you've been reading through John with us, you'll have seen multiple healings already. But this one is different because instead of being asked for from the start, the question Jesus is asked is not, can you heal this person? It's not, can you help this man? It's, who sinned? This man or his parents, that he was born blind? His disciples want to know who is being punished. Whose fault is it that this man is suffering? And that seems cruel in a way, but we see that it's not just them that think this. In verse 34, near the end of the chapter, when this man, having been healed, is talking to the Jewish leaders, they tell him, you were steeped in sin, soaked in sin, full of it, at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. They thought if someone was suffering as he was, if there was something permanent wrong with them, it must be because they or their parents had upset God in some way. But Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. He says, no, no, no. I know why this has happened. It's because God is going to do something great in this man's life. And later, thousands of years later, other people will be able to read this story and will be able to learn. But do you think this man or his parents ever asked through the rest of his life? He's a grown up man and he's been blind all his life. So. 20, 30 years, maybe? Do you think in that time he's never asked God, why did you do this to me? What have I done wrong? What did my parents do wrong? That I'm suffering now. And quite often it is that way. Sometimes things happen and you won't get an immediate answer about why God's doing it. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we have to wait a long time. And we should always be sceptical of people who immediately after a natural disaster or um, some sort of uh, man-made disaster or a widespread illness say immediately, I know why God has done this. Especially if they say he's done this because this group of people has been especially sinful. Because ultimately, sometimes bad things happen to good people. And that is because the world is broken because of man's sin. But it isn't always a direct punishment for a specific sin. Sometimes it might be, but we should be careful before we say, whose fault is this? Who can we blame? Who can we be angry at instead of being scared or sad? But we don't need to replace those things with anger. We can turn to God instead. We can talk to him. You know, you can say, like Nicodemus did, I don't understand. And that's okay. Because sometimes we won't understand. This man spent his whole life not understanding. Until Jesus came and said, It's all right. This is because God has chosen to do something great in you. And this man does then display God's work in his life. He goes to the synagogue 
he goes to the Jewish leaders and says, look, I'm healed. And even though they've already made up their minds about Jesus, even though they get angry with him, even though in the end they throw him out and they say, you're not welcome here anymore. Don't come to us any longer. He tells them the truth. He tells them the truth about Jesus. And all he says to them, really, is this is what Jesus has done for me. And because of this, I want to follow him. And I find that really encouraging because that's something all of us can do if we've been saved by Jesus. That's the only truth we need to tell people in some ways. You can say this is what Jesus has done. This is what he's done for me. And so I want to follow him. It's not complicated, but it might make people angry. Because it's a hard thing to hear sometimes. A lot of people don't want to know who Jesus is. But if we keep telling the truth, then we are displaying the works of God in our lives. And that's a very good thing indeed. And I hope that we can all keep doing that. I think we should pray now that we'll be able to tell the truth the way that man did, even though he'd spent his whole life up to that point, not knowing what was going on, even though he had lots of reasons, he could probably be angry at God. When Jesus came and he understood who Jesus was, he gave himself to Jesus and he went out and he told the truth about Jesus, even though so many people weren't ready to hear it. And because of that, Jesus honoured him at the end of the chapter and he's going to keep honouring him. I'm sure that man is uh, with him now. I'm sure he'll be with us all in the new creation and we can say congratulations ourselves. So let's pray. Father, thank you that in your word you've made it clear that when bad things happen it's not always a direct punishment it's, suffering is not because we are worse than anyone else although we have all sinned we've all fallen short and really we all deserve punishment but thank you that you have come and you have taken our punishment and you have given us a hope that we can lean on whatever suffering comes our way, that we can turn to you and know that we are safe. Whatever happens to us in this life, we are safe with you. And Father, I pray that you would give us the strength to speak the truth to our friends, to our family, to anyone that you give us the opportunity to speak to. And Lord, that you would help us not to be afraid, but to say just the things that we know are true. And that we would display the works of God in our lives. That everyone would be able to see what Jesus has done for us and why he is worth following with our whole lives. Amen. All right. I'll see you in a few days, I think. Yeah.